Hey, what's your name? And what are you doing here? My name is Rick Glassman, and I'm doing stand-up comedy. Oh, how long have you been doing stand-up comedy? Like 12 years now, yeah. 12 years? And you think you're going to win this show? Well, I, I, I guess I'll leave it to you guys to, to decide that. I don't know. I, sh I certainly I would like to. Okay, let's see what you got. Thank you. <clears throat> yeah. Scoot doo. Blabbity blue. Scoop D. Oh, yeah. Hear me. Ooh. Okay. <laughs> Going. <laughs> All right, we came to my Goku, and now uh, you lead us in from the theme song. Um. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna. Say, you know what's funny? I was thinking about it. What is his theme song? I couldn't remember the the the, the melody. I caught myself listening to your podcast last. I night. remember. Zoop do, scooby doo -wah. <laughs> I remember it now. It just came to me. Yeah. Scooby doo. Okay. Well, you're peeking. Scooby -wah -wah. Well, you know, get your sound together, man. What are you doing over there? It should be at like five, and then you turn it up. At what point? Will I have somebody do this? You know, yeah. well, I don't understand. Like, don't so when I you will. finish doing every podcast, yeah, do you do you like do play with all the knobs? <laughs> some some people are closer than others. Some people are soft. <laughs> Betty, when Betty Betty's so quiet that in post when we have to put her up, we could hear my stomach gurgling from across the room. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she doesn't like to hold the mic close to her, and she just kind of like you know. Betty, uh, probably. 8% of the responses I have to Betty are, huh? Yeah. In real life, you know? <laughs> okay. This is good. Eric, this is your seventh uh, time here. Really? Yeah. Jesus. It's almost like we're doing a podcast at this point. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, there we go. Let me make sure that's okay. All right. You happy? This is like a whole thing for every podcast. It's like, how are the arms... Like, is it like connected properly? You know, it's, what do you mean? Are you saying podcasts in general? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Every place I go, it'll be like you know, the, the, you know, the level of professionalism based off the mic arm, how the mic arm is. Yeah, how's you know this? I mean? Yeah, no, <laughs> it's a good mic arm. <laughs> it's a great mic arm, but you know, it's like a Ferrari engine connected to a Pinto. You know what I mean? So it's like, it is what it is. You'll well, have a rig. You'll have the take your shoes off studio one day. You know, some little spot you'll have. I just did Trash Tuesday. No, if you're trying to last long. You just change positions. Why? Because then you get. It's like when you're working out, you you take a rest. Hey, like I'm sure I don't know if anyone ever fucks you face forward, but like <laughs> if you're behind, maybe you would say here, get on my back and face. I'll oh, get on my back and face that way or something. And there was comments on it. Uh, I don't remember exactly what it was. I want to find it. Maybe I'll put it up. But basically, I screen grabbed it. Um, basically, people saying, uh, oh, I didn't know Rick's funny because the way I am here is uh, a lot harder for me. Like, I realized on this podcast that Rick is a lot funnier when people he's with don't constantly bring up his OCD and idiosyncrasies. <laughs> And then someone's like, that's why he needs a studio outside of his place of residence. He's trying to maintain his harmony too much. And the man is more civilized than average. Thank you. But oh, yeah. Oh, I, 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 that's a, you know what? I, I, yeah. I, I co signed that. Same. I, re I screen grabbed that. <laughs> yeah, I co signed that. I didn't realize, I mean, I know how I am in my place. Even now, like we're talking about it. Like, ugh, I hate when you, but it's also when you're a guest, you know? It's just no pressure. You just be yourself. You just go with it. You're not worried about like, oh my god, is this blurry? <laughs> <laughs> That's my thing. It's like, oh man, dude, it's just it it, it just becomes a thing. But like, you know, <laughs> I'm you, always worried about it being blurry. Yeah, <laughs> it's because, especially because the camera I have, I have a Panasonic, you know, a Lumix. Yeah, and so when you press, if you press the button on top to start it. It'll do this autofocus thing. Let me hear you. Sound, let me hear your sound effects and mess it up. No, I mean, there's no sound effects for it. And then you uh, do that on stage. I miss your sound effects. <laughs> oh. I'll do it. <laughs> yeah, I would never do that. <laughs> never. We'll be right back after a word from our sponsors. Hello. You know what time it is. It's time for me to sell you some products. Not just because I believe in them, but because this is how we keep the train running. And you better sign up for one of these things or stop watching the podcast. It's my pleasure to introduce my cousin, Miranda. Hi, Miranda. Hey, how are you? I'm, I'm fine. Okay. We're all just fine, I think, you know? Oh. No? Are we, are some people doing well? We can't get into this. We're selling products now. We can't. Okay. Right. Get in your Tyso gear. Okay. Oh, 
Wow, this is super cute. RickLessman.com, check out the store. But that's not why we're here. Okay. We're here to deliver not just a good time, but to deliver some food as well. For a limited time, you can get 25% off and zero delivery fees on your order of $15 or more. When you download the DoorDash app and enter code TISO. Well, Ricky, I love the free merch and you know I love you and love spending time with you, but if we're being really honest, this is the real reason I came here today. I know. You know I love wine. I drink it every night while watching Bachelor in Paradise, Love Island, or Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. Then you're gonna love Lathwaite's. I also gotta say, you're very good at this. Oh, thank you. You are. This is good. I'm liking this, <laughs> doing this with you. Get six amazing bottles of wine, plus two bonus bottles and two stemless wine glasses for only $49.99 plus tax with free delivery. So all I have to do is text SHOES to 64000 for this great deal. That's right. And I have to tell you, the stemless wine glasses are like... Tell me about it later. We got to do more of this. We're going to open the box later okay, in the episode. Okay, okay, I'm going to okay. give you some gifts. Great. Terms apply. And so now I realize you just press that red button and then it won't mess up the focus. Oh, yeah. I do a... I do a manual focus. Oh, okay. Maybe I should do that. I don't Especially know. Especially if it's a static shot. Yeah. But then I don't, I'm by myself, so I can't. I have me on autofocus and you on manual focus. You're going to be crisp, and I keep coming in and out Well, of I should have just sat there for you, but then you have the whole thing about me sitting on your chair, and this is why you need to go someplace else. Hey, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. But we won't bring up. You know, sometimes it's funny you say about comments, because it's funny I got this weird comment about this new podcast I'm going. It's called Jen to Jen. With check me. it out now. We can check out everything yeah, you see every all the Wednesday, time you go. You know? So I get this like message from this guy who's like, you know, I'm a I'm a top radio show guy, and you know your podcast got. I'm not going to read all of it, but he's like, your podcast got off to a terrible start, and he's trying to tell me what I'm Fuck. supposed to do. What, well, I want to know what what should we do? I want to try. Tell me what we're supposed to do. Let's do that for this one. You know, and he says, uh, no, no, no. He's not giving me thing. He's just criticizing me. Gotcha. And then at the end of it, and like, I don't mind the criticism. Like, I don't know why people think I I, I don't mind the criticism. I mind how you criticize. Like criticism is great. Like if you if you're giving me some constructive criticism, like you know I don't like your camera, maybe fix the backdrop, or like it's out of focus, or I don't like the sound. That's stuff that you can actually do. But this idiot, the, th this really pisses me off. The last sentence. I know how you get defensive with criticism, so I hope you don't take this the wrong way. No, that sentence is what I take the wrong way. I gotta tell you, he's you, you gave him a leg to stand on. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean? I, well. That's what I say to that guy. Like I, I just, I just think to myself, like the fact that people think that is okay to write to someone is just mind-boggling to me. It's mind-boggling to me the things that people say. It's like, tell me, you know, hey man, I look, you look fat, uh, but you know, I, here's ten workout regimens to help you with your. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you like that comment? The, the, if it's like that, yeah. If you go, hey, uh, I, I found that the keto diet works for me and this is what I've done. Or uh, I found like, you know, you can read that. But when people lace it with, you know, they lace it with something like that kind of like that last statement, that's the thing that pisses me so off. So this one bothers you more than two. Here's one. Um, I know you get defensive, man. I'm just trying to help. I don't like that. This you like. You look fat. Here are some workouts you could do. Boom. Okay. No, no, well, I, actually, some the, comments. actually, the you look fat part, no. You know, it's like, it's all about how you, the, sometimes the message gets lost in the delivery. Do you want to play a little game with me? Oh, brother. <laughs> Do you want to play like, uh, you know how some people get like real, I mean, drink that a little louder? Jesus Christ, let me lower, <laughs> you're well, peaking. <laughs> <laughs> you say you like sound effects. Cut back, <laughs> cut back, cut back to him drinking that water. <sighs> <laughs> the game I wanted to play was uh, sometimes people get like when people I, uh, they get real spiritual like in their connection with people like y y what did you say it's, it's da 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 but it's how you say it and then people be like exactly <laughs> you know like I want to see if I want to connect with you on that I want I don't want to tell that part but what no I don't want to talk about it on here I don't want to talk about sexual stuff out in here. After doing Trash Tuesdays, I feel like I don't even want people to know I have a dick. Yeah. That whole thing was, holy shit. Don't worry. I, I've been on it, too. It was <laughs> like, yeah, there was a lot of stuff that they had to cut out because it was a big argument ensued. Sure. <laughs> and I can't even blame them because it wasn't like, I'm like, please, please. It's just that, you know, you match energies. And when, when yeah. this one's talking about that, you know, just everything pouring out of her. And it's just like, I'm not going to be like, you know, I, what's your favorite Mexican restaurant? <laughs> 
But then I, I had I called Betty afterwards. I'm like, Betty, she doesn't care, by the way, but I still like I get embarrassed. I go, Betty, it got dirty. <laughs> <laughs> And she goes, I knew it would. <laughs> well, that's good. That, that's helpful to have somebody like that. Yeah, I like, I like uh, the relationship I have with Betty. And I may have had other relationships like this, and I assumed otherwise. But there is no part of me that's worried about what I talk about on stage or here. Am I going to make her is – am I going to represent her poorly? Or is she going to be embarrassed? Yeah. Do you but it is something to think about. I mean, yeah, I mean, I, I used to think that there w that wasn't a thing. And then the more serious your relationship gets, the more it turns into like, you know, she's like, oh, you're talking about me or Rachel's a little bit like that. She does get. But sometimes I don't know what it's going to be. Right. Sometimes I'm talking about a relationship. I'll talk about her on stage and then she gets excited because she's like, that was all about me. You know, like, you know, <laughs> that. But then if she like really delves into it and be like, you know, you're making me look bad or, you know, so it's like it, right. it just depends on not everything has to be a joke and you just make, you know, you, everything has to be a joke. <laughs> And then you just go into like whatever you you you, you want to do, you know. Sometimes I know I was using it as a way of like, you know, like, like I remember one time, I, I'm talking about something in our relationship, and then she said to me, she was like, well, you know, all these people were laughing, it made me feel like you know you were right, you know. Oh, that must have felt good. Oh, that was the whole point. I looked at my phone. <laughs> <laughs> that was literally the whole point. Your phone's right there. You you left it right there. Uh, uh, cut to Benny Hill music and Rick being an idiot looking for his phone. out of breath just from that huh i don't you know i just you know what i really can i just because this is bothering me still this thing you know yes. what you know what i think what this process of being like a public figure and being online and this kind of thing is like the fact that people think they know you mm. like they think they know oh i know how he's gonna react to this bugs the shit out of me is there <laughs> anything to like they do somewhat though what like they have an idea Oh, no, that's what I'm saying. They, they have like a, a very surface idea based off what, you know, their own, people put their own thing into yeah. things. You know what I'm saying? So it's just like, I don't know. It's just, it's just, it's very, very, very frustrating. How do you feel about being a public figure? Like, um, uh, I've been thinking about, let me ask you that more specifically. Uh -huh. I've been thinking about like as an actor, which is, I want to be, I want to be acting and directing and directing. It's not as much of an issue, but acting, I want to be an actor. Mm -hmm. And like, there are some actors that have started podcasting after they, you know, people know them as different character act yeah, characters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But once you do this, if we're if this doesn't work, then it doesn't work. And if this does work, I, it's I don't know. Like, is it going to be harder for people to buy into me playing somebody who's not charismatic, for example, or something different than who I am? <laughs> Real question, comedy <laughs> wink. You know what I'm asking? Yeah, I mean. I I don't. You don't think about it. I don't think about it. I started thinking about it. I know, because I, I feel like, well, because I've already been like, uh, you get typecasted no matter what you do. You know, if you think about it. If so, you get, I'm just talking about getting casted. Okay, but even when you get casted, let's say you get casted in a show like you you did. Like it's Cast. like, you know, you're you're autistic in a show. Right. So now moving forward, that's all you you're gonna be. That's, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like they're gonna be like. Uh, they're not going to see you as anything else. That's just what Hollywood does until you can get break through. I mean, for me, it was like Montez. That's it. So like everything I go on, they think like, well, he's got to be, you got to be big and crazy, you know? And then yeah. like, even to the point where I remember going to this audition and then, and then the casting director says to me like, you know, this isn't Montez, right? And I wanted to punch him in his face because I was like, oh, re really? The, as if that's all I can do. So what did you know about me before you casted me for that? You didn't know anything, so you didn't assume, you know. But that's what they do. They he goes, "What he goes? You. Oh, I know this. I know you don't take criticism well, and you get a little <laughs> defensive, <laughs> you know." But it was like, 
it just became like a, it became like, it's, that's what they do. You realize that's what they do. Like, you know, so you have to wait for somebody to break, to be like, well, let me give you a chance in this other thing. And then even when you do that, they'll be like, oh, you can only do this. And you know, they just, how, it's just how the process works. That's so so, so think people think you're a podcast is important. Or, well, yeah, 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 exactly. That's, but that's, I think, why people go into that anyway. I think they go into be like, I'm tired of other people telling me what I can and cannot do. Let me create my own thing. But then you still need somebody to okay that. You still yeah. need somebody to go like, all right, I think, I think this will work. Let's try it out. And then when it works, they're like, I knew it. <laughs> you know. What's your favorite thing you've done as an actor? Um, damn, I don't even know. My fa- I don't even know if Give I have a Give me a favorite f- thing. I don't know if I have a favorite. Well, it's probably workaholics, no. you know. And I would say that just because it was like, um, you know, the first big thing I did, the first chance I got, and it was like so fun to work with these people, and it was like so free spirited, uh, you know, how they filmed it and all that. The first first few years, I would say, was my favorite part. How old were you when you booked it? I don't even remember. That might be ten years ago now. So I was probably like really late thirties. And you were doing stand up for a while. Yeah, yeah, I'd been doing stand up. Did yeah. you think that it's it's gonna work? Like, when you moved out here, how I always lived. In, I always lived in LA. Um, I didn't think I knew that about. Oh, yes, I do. I remember you played basketball out here. Yeah, yeah. Uh, did you think you're did, like, you know, people people get into this business and they go like, I'm gonna make it. I know it's tough, but I'm gonna make it. I feel like you have to have that mentality, right? Yeah. But n- did you always think that? Because you didn't get your, you know, workaholics until you're, you, like you said, mid to late thirties. Yeah, but I hadn't. I only. I started, but I started late, so it didn't. I just. I already knew that whatever was going to happen was going to happen. You know, so it wasn't like you I were teaching until what? Yeah, yeah. 30? I was like, yeah, I was thirty years old when I was. I was like, let me go into comedy. You know, so it doesn't matter. Like, I don't even think about like, oh, is this going to happen or not? I mean. You know, I'd already been doing like some TV stuff in terms of like, you know, all, like, you know, uh, live at Gotham type, those kind of like stand up, stand up shows. You know what I mean? So it's just a matter of time before you, you know, get in, get into other things. I, mean, I always thought that, you know what I mean? So acting was what you wanted or comedy? No, no, no. I, I want I, I, I had this vision of like how everybody did it before you. You got big as a stand up and then they put you in movies and TV. You know, that's what I, and then so I'm coming on the tail end of like the world changed. It wasn't like that anymore. The Internet was big. You know, uh, there's so many cable shows. It was like a totally different process. And so now, like, you know, the you know, the clubs, they weren't just booking you because you're funny that they needed to know you had a follow. Is that what it was that it was just booking you because you're funny? No, 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 man. Uh, uh, I'm no, saying, I'm, I'm saying it started to change. Is what but I'm, I'm saying. saying before you, because I don't know that either. There was a time where clubs just booked who's funny, and it didn't yeah, yeah, matter yeah, yeah. why, because there weren't that many people on things. Yeah, 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 exactly. And then these, and then there, and, you know, there was like a, a reputation, and then like the club took it. The t- the club took responsibility for their reputation. So the club had a mailing list. The club had a phone bank. The club they had, were curating. Yeah, their they gallery. were curating their own thing, and they had like you know the morning radio. That makes sense. That's, that's you, know? you know I guess I because that connects to like you know people had their clubs and like you know the, the Richard Pryor room and like people had their their places. Was there a loyalty to certain clubs? Because I know Bobby Lee feels that way, or at least he says he does to the Comedy Store. But how do you get booked back then if people don't know who you are? No, I'm saying, but the people because the comedy community was interconnected. I, I I think it was more like that. You know, it was more like the you know you relied on the agents, and so like the agents would be mm-hmm. like, you know, hey, this is my guy. He he's big over here. He's he's in at this club, and then it was just like you know that's when the days when you had to send tapes, send VHS tapes, and like. Do you, you remember know? when you had to? I guess when I first moved out here, when like, I wonder if people still do this or I'm not that anymore. People would be like, send me a, like you had to send tapes just to get spots. Do you remember that? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, is that still that way, or we just no, don't have to do that the anymore? The reason why I'm on, I'm telling you, like I was really on the tail end of this where things changed because I remember buying a box of 15 minute VHS tapes, blank VHS tapes. I still have it someplace, like just a box of unopened, and it was like right there when it like it did, that that moved away. That, mm-hmm. They didn't do that anymore. Like all of these things. So I just put away my my spindle of uh, v, uh, CDRs. Right. Yeah. The same thing. You know, it's like, remember, oh, God. Like, all the things that we just don't do anymore, 
is crazy. And so like it, it, how it changed the business. So to me, the clubs took more responsibility. So they, you know, they had, a, they built their reputation in their city, in their community. If you come to our club, we're going to show you the funniest comics. And so people would just go being like, Ooh, I can't wait to see who this person is. I want to ask you more specifically about you because we don't talk about it that much. And I've said this on this podcast with you and with other people, you're one of my favorite standups. I, you're just, just, like when I watch this guy, right? So that's a skill set that you have. Yeah. Doesn't pay the same as TV. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What well, you- actually, yeah, right. It doesn't, it, well, at my level, no. At the highest you've ever been paid didn't come close to the first TV show you got. Right, right. Yeah, for me. Yes. But I'm saying, but I know now stand up pays more than TV. Not for you? Not for me, though. Right. That, but what I'm getting yeah, at yeah, is yeah. your skill set is big yeah, yeah, on the yeah. thing that doesn't pay that much. Right, right, right. Do you think that you're better at stand-up? I mean, that's not to... Yeah, that's my question. What what is, what is your thing? If you could make a living making the most money doing something, podcast, stand-up, acting, writing, mm-hmm. what is your thing where you're like, I got this the most? Well, I know what it's not is marketing myself. <laughs> <laughs> That's the, <laughs> that's, the, that's the least one, you know what I mean? Yeah. Because I think that if I was, I'm, I'm but ne- again, I'm trying to work on that because I think it would we'll be get stand to up. I want to hear what I'm saying. Craft. I think it would be stand up. I mean, I really enjoy doing stand up, but see, I, and even as I say that out loud, I go, but I also really enjoy doing acting. Like, I could see myself being a great character actor for the rest yeah. of my life, you know, uh, then ha- having that one thing where I'm like the guy, you know what I mean? Uh, but it's like, you know, I love both of those things, but they're all interconnected. So what I found out like through the pandemic is like learning that like, oh, I'm monetizing my personality. Like this is all about my personality and just finding ways to like, you know, again, monetize that in a way of like, okay, going out and doing stand up or uh, getting on a project because of who I am, uh, you know, maybe writing your own thing. And so, you know, I, I feel like that is the the end goal or, or the- what? Or the next, the next step is to like you know create your own thing. What does that mean? Like, like if you want, if you want it to be a, a TV show, you create your own TV show. If you want it, if it's a podcast that you know, you know that that blows you up. I mean, I look at someone like Tom Segura, who was always a really funny comic. You know, like I remember pre your mom's house, Tom Segura was like a guy you bet, man, that guy's funny. Mm-hmm. But nothing was happening on the road for him because of this change in like you know people didn't know who he was. Then he got this big platform. It blew up for him, and now he could take that skill set that he always had and 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 put it out to more people. That was my that was one of my inspirations of like what I wanted out of this was people to want to come and see you do shows. Right. That was the whole point of me starting a podcast myself too. But then it just became a thing where it was like I felt like I got in the game too late, you know. So mm. it's, so it's like you know it's like it, you just don't know what makes something blow up. But you know I'm still in it. I'm not like discouraged by it because I'm still doing things. You know I'm still doing my podcast I, and I and you know and all the time people come up to me like I just was in Denver and someone will come up to me and be like, hey man, I really enjoy your podcast. You know it helps me and I'm like, oh okay, so this is why I'm doing it. You know, I just need like 10,000 more of these people. You know what I mean? But you, you're reaching one at a time and it's like, it's all part of the journey. You know what I mean? I, I, I'm making a good living. I'm not like, so I'm not like, I, so sometimes I think to myself like, what am I like, you know, it's, it's no need, like enjoy it too. And so it doesn't have to be like, you don't have to be Joe Rogan. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, but that's what people compare themselves to. They go, well, look at the heights that you could be. How close are you to that? And it's like, ah, forget that feeling it's just like what am i doing and i'm enjoying it yeah uh your stand-up is not something you bring into the podcast no no i i and you know you know what dude i don't understand even for myself it's similar to what people are saying about you like you go on other podcasts and they go oh this guy's funny blah 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 and then when you're on your podcast it's different it becomes about like i think people like me on my podcast too but i'm I'm just saying that that thing you know what i mean you know talk about defensive um but it's like it's like that happens to me all the time so now i see it because like i know on my podcast this is like i'm like this is my stream of consciousness this is how i feel about things this is how I'm like, you know, and I go and I don't I'm not making an effort to be like like bad friends where everything's got to be like, you know, goo, 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 
yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Like they really are playing up their their thing. They're, that's that part of their personality, and they play off each other like that. In the same way that when I get on these things and I'm like that with them yeah. too, people are like, oh, we like that, you know? But it's like I can't do that on my podcast because I could, but I just don't. It's not something I, 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 I like to do because I like to have deep, meaningful conversations. I like to, like, if I have a thought about something, I like to express that thought. That's what I, but it doesn't mean that the people, the masses, that they, they, they're, they're telling me, well, we don't actually like that. You know, we like it when you're on, you're being funny and silly on other people's podcasts. Where do you take your introspective thoughts, the things that you're talking about are your podcast? How does that translate into stand up? Because your stand up is that, but it's through a filter of stand up. Yeah, because that because you have to cultivate a stand up act, you know, like so when I'm just sitting in sitting doing a podcast, I'm not pre writing and then going to do podcast open mics. Yeah. And you know, like, you know, doing doing this, you know, and then I go, Okay, now I'm ready to go is do Is that what you do for open mics? <laughs> no, I don't do open mics anymore. I meant what you just said. But my but I'm saying so now so then I'll have a thought. Now I'm using my podcast as a way of like, okay, so here's an idea I have for stand-up. Could I put you on the spot with a couple of stand-up, like uh, putting a magnifying glass on it? Yeah, what do you mean? So you've come up with some premises on the podcast? Yes, yes. Could you t tell me some premises? Yeah, yeah. So like um, I'm, I'm trying right now, I'm working on this bit about obesity, you know? And like, so I, if I could, I could just talk about it right now. I could be serious about it, but I, I'm now working on trying to make it entertaining and funny What made you think this is going to be funny because you realized something resonated with you or you had a little piece of that's funny. Let me expand on it. Um, well, first the thought, the thought is like, it's like a, 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 a biting idea. Like it's like, it's a harsh idea. What was the I, idea? I'm trying to, well, I mean, I'm just talking about obesity is like a shadow organization. You know, there, it's like this. You know this, this, this. They're they're hiding in plain sight. You know, it's like it's like if I could be a nerd for a second, it's like Hydra from you know from a Marvel universe. Mm -hmm. You know, and then body positivity is Shield, and these social justice warriors they think they're they're Avengers, but they're fighting on the wrong side. You know, so it's this idea that about, is, is obesity the bad guy? Yes, obesity is really the bad guy, right? You know what I mean? Well, Hydra's and, a bad guy. I know. So I'm not getting it. How is that hiding? No, no, because Hydra was in really in plain sight. They were like, yeah. they were like, they were right in front of everybody's face. You know what I mean? They was like, but we didn't know. You know what I mean? We, <sighs> we just didn't know. So I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I just got want to understand this. We don't see people that are obese. No, no. What I'm saying is people don't talk about obesity. Right. Like, they, they, obesity is the real enemy. You know, they're, they're, it's the real enemy. Like people blame, you know, people blame thing, people blame deaths on other things that is caused by obesity. I follow a couple of uh, doctor accounts that I like on Instagram, and one of them is just really pushing, and I'm all for it. I've been for it since before. Yeah. Like, not to say that COVID isn't an issue. Obviously, it is. But just w one of these types of people that are talking about like, when we're talking about what to do about COVID, we're mentioning masks, vaccines, all the stuff that I'm for, by the way. Yeah. But like the bigger things are not getting sunlight, seed oils, you know, refined sugars, this kind of stuff. Well, if I can give you another analogy that I'm using from my bit is, you know, COVID is like the iceberg that hit the Titanic. Obesity is the lack of lifeboats and safety precautions. Like who killed who? You know what I mean? Like the iceberg, if the Titanic didn't hit the iceberg, of course, everybody survives. But obesity is still underwater. You know, but, but I'm saying is, but the obesity is the thing that like it killed people because they couldn't, you know, they, oh, there's no lifeboats. There's no, you know, what are we going to do? We didn't, we didn't do this right. So, and that's what I think was happening with. So anyways, what I'm saying is when I'm talking about it like this, it's just like a serious topic and boom, boom, boom. So when I go on stage, I got to find a way to like, how do I reach people? How do I make people laugh about right, this? We're going to put you, you on, know, on, you know on, what on I mean? take your shoes off the take, take your shoes off spot. I need a, uh, you've been put on the spot The take your shoes off spot where I'm going to fill up my coffee and I want you to do your no <laughs> i'm gonna convince them we'll be right back <laughs>
As you already know, this episode is brought to you by DoorDash. Miranda, you use DoorDash. I use it an embarrassingly frequent amount of times. I think of DoorDash like a video game mm -hmm. where you just, you go on and you just play and then you win right. this sandwich and right. these fries and this ice cream. Last night, I really wanted a margarita and I didn't feel like going out. And there's a whole category on DoorDash that's margaritas and tacos. They have over 300,000 partners that deliver different kinds of food. So Anything. it's not just margaritas. Really? I'm not just trying to get you guys some delicious margaritas margaritas and meals delivered to your door. I'm also trying to get you guys to support the podcast. So here it is, straight up. Sign up for this. If you've never used DoorDash, sign up and use the promo code TISO to get 25% off and zero delivery fees. And also, I don't know if this is tacky to say, but if you already use DoorDash, create a new account mm -hmm. and just do it. That's 25% off up to a $10 value and zero delivery fees on your first order. When you download the DoorDash app in the App Store and use promo code, say it with me, Tyso. Tyso. Don't forget that's code Tyso for 25% off your first order with DoorDash. Subject, Subject to change, change terms, terms apply. apply. So my mother taught me, whenever you go show up someplace, you bring a gift. That's right. You never show up empty handed. Right. The classic gift is wine. Mm -hmm. I also, I got to say, sometimes I like to bring an orchid. That's classy, but you can't drink it. That's true. And I learned that the hard way. <laughs> <laughs> Lathwaite's is a wine subscription service that curates wines from different vineyards from across the world. They pick smaller vineyards that you may not have heard of. Oh, that's awesome. They taste over 40,000 wines a year, but only 600 make the cut. That sounds like my dream. 100% satisfaction is guaranteed. So if you don't like a wine for whatever reason, and I'm sure you would love all of them. I mean, yeah. You'll let Lathwaite's know and you receive a refund. Oh, each box includes tasting notes, food pairing tips, and serving inspiration. Look at this. Very nice, sturdy packaging. If you could see, we could push in on Ooh. this. But here, I'm going to have you try a sip. I'd love to. But I'll have to wash the glass. Ooh, these are nice. Okay, clean glass. What should we try? I'm assuming a white, so you don't have a heart palpitation about me sitting on your couch. A Pinot Grigio. Ooh, I love a nice Pinot Grigio. That's the first one we got. It's from Italia. <gasps> Perfetto, Italia. So I worked in a very upscale wine restaurant, and I learned that you could just go like this, mm. and you don't have to cut it. Wow, that's a nice hack. What is that called? Sogno di Ariana. That means dream. Sogno, does that mean dream? Of Ariana? So please be very careful I'll with this. I'll be very, very careful. You, you turn it. That way you know. That when you turn it, that's, oh, that guy knows wine. Yeah. I took a class. <laughs> Subscriptions are flexible. There's no commitment to continue. And you can cancel at any time. Ooh, this is really good. Like I said, I'm looking for some support on the podcast. And I want Lathwaite's to know that we care about them the way that you care about us. So sign up for it. Help us out a little bit. Send me a DM of a screen grab of you signing up for it, too. So I could say, thank you so, so much. It is very good. And I know my wines. Now get six amazing bottles of wine plus two bonus bottles and two stemless wine glasses for $49.99 plus tax with free delivery. Just text SHOES to 64000. That's 64000. Sounds easy enough. And we're not going to share what time it was when we recorded this either. Just text SHOES to 64000. To get this special offer, just text SHOES to 64000. That's SHOES to 64000. Terms, terms apply. apply. Available, Available at lathwaitscom slash terms. terms. Today's podcast is brought to you by Hydro, a state-of-the-art rowing machine that is designed to transform the way you work out. This is the rowing machine Rick has been talking about. He just showed it to me. It's gorgeous. So I first talked about this rowing machine a couple months ago on the Bobby Lee podcast. I've had some injuries. I had a shoulder surgery, elbow surgery, some hernia surgeries. And boy, his arm's tired. So I saw them advertising on Instagram and I reached out to them because I have a lot of injuries mm -hmm. and I can't do a lot of working out. And rowing was always something that just didn't hurt me. Right, it's more low impact. So they sent me one to try. I I would want to say if I was posting this on Instagram, this isn't an ad, mm -hmm. but it is an ad. Right. So um, it's like this is an ad, but also this is like I asked for this. You I, sought this out. Yes, and I've been using it, and I don't feel like I'm back to my standard athletic shape. But I did go and have lunch with a friend recently who said that my arms look bigger. I don't believe him. I don't want to say that they're not. You, you're a little insecure, but he said my veins were popping a little bit. And wow. Felt good. Well, that's nice. I've used row machines before because it's something I would use for warming up. But with this thing, it's a full body workout. And, I, you know, I saw it upstairs and there's a huge screen attached to it. It's like really beautiful and high tech. It was named one of Time Magazine's best inventions of 2020. Wow. And rowing with a hydro works up to 86% of your muscles as opposed to 44% from just cycling. You're not just watching an instructor either. It's beautiful. Hydro's workouts are filmed live. That's right. I saw on the TV up there. She's really on a lake. You can see the backdrop and the scenery. It's really pretty. From Boston to Seattle, from Miami to London. Wow. So it's like you're taking a little mini vacation while you're working out. 
Yes. Plus, one membership comes with unlimited profiles for the whole family. So what you're saying is I can come over and use it. Yes. And you'll have access to live on-demand workouts. What do they include? Pilates, yoga, strength, conditioning, and more. I had no idea you could do so much on one rowing machine. We did do this a little commercially, <laughs> but... It, I have been using it. It got me working out again. And I absolutely love this thing. Learn more at hydro.com. That's H Y D R O W dot com. I don't know why Ricky's making me do this. <laughs> this is really annoying. Um, but yeah, this, is, this reminds me of doing Zoom shows during the pandemic. This is <laughs> really ridiculous. There's no audience. <laughs> it's so annoying. So, you know. I don't know, Rick. So this real talk is more about like, how do you use the podcast to, you know, work towards, you know, stand up if that's the goal? Not everybody does that. You know, I don't know. Like, it's just like we're funny people. So, but I realize that a lot of the things I talk about come from like a real place. But it's like, you know, like sometimes these, these things are harsh. You know what I mean? Like, I have a lot of harsh thoughts. And I know your stand up is very dark. You know, so sometimes when I'm on stage, I'm like, ooh, I got to find a different way to say this, even though I believe in the point that I'm making. Like, I had this really harsh, you know, thing that I was, and I just, I don't do it. I have to figure a different way to get into it. Sometimes you decide, you got to go, you know what, this isn't for, maybe this isn't for the stage. Or sometimes you go, if you're making fun of a certain group a certain way, maybe people think, oh man, uh, you know, why are you doing it? Then they start to judge you based off that. And so sometimes I take that criticism as a way of being like, ooh, maybe I'm not doing this right. Or maybe I should change it. And I have done that. There was a, yeah, you told me there was a, a mom came up to you once after a show and told you something and it changed your perspective. What was well, that? I mean, no, actually, this happened just, just recently. I was in Arizona. Shout out to Arizona. I'll put the Instagram over here. You know, it was like, um, but this was like the, my first out-of-town gig out of the pandemic, you know, and I had these jokes about transgender and all this stuff, you know, and this, this girl, you know, or I don't even know, girl, guy, I'm not even sure, uh, hits me up and it's just like, you know, I was so hurt by what you were talking about and that really pissed me off because I'm just like, and you know, because you know when you're a comic, you go, you think you're expressing yourself the, uh, in a certain way and when people miss your point, you get mad at them initially, you know, so initially I'm like, oh, what the hell are you talking about? You know what I mean? Mm. But I always take time to go after that and be like, okay, does that person have a point? You know what I mean? So that's why I always say the message gets lost in the delivery. I mean, you could come at me about anything, you know, but if you come at me like an asshole, then you're going to get an asshole, you know? And so, and then even when you don't, and I'm just taking it like, I'm like, oh man. So anyways, I talked to uh, my friend of mine that also went to the show and she expressed something to me, you know, that I was like, that's not what I said. You know what I mean? But it's like, well, that's how it came across. That's how love, people love to do that. People love to say you said something because they interpreted it that way. And then you go, that's not what I said. And then they, they'll always say, well, that's what it sounded like to me. You know what I mean? And so at that point, I, I took all that information and I said, well, let me think about this. And then I thought to myself, you know what? Th these, these feelings they have are valid. So how can I rework this bit so they... So people like that won't feel this way, and I can still get my point across. How'd you do it? What was the joke? Well, it, at first it was about like, okay, so if I, if I say, if I see like a transgender person, and I would be like, you know, if it's one that's like passable, you know? Wait, hold on. Yeah. It's so annoying. Sorry. Go ahead. If it's one that's like passable, the joke was about, you know, it's like. Passable. You, you know, like if you see a transgender woman, and like you don't know. Like those are the ones where you'd be like, all right, you know, that's, okay. you know what I mean? Like even any guy, if I say, Hey, look at that. that and then you go, Ooh, it's fine. I go, used to be a man. And if you go like this, okay, that means you'd still smash, you know? Sure. So the perspective, Make love. sorry, the perspective I was going at before was just being like, I was accepting people if I thought they were attractive. So you're like, you could go into comedy if you're funny, right? Like so you could, you could transition if I think you're hot. Boom. Right. Exactly. So I changed it to talking about pretty privilege and realizing that it's it's terrible that we only accept people based off hot. So same joke, but you're taking the opposite side of it now. Yes. You are now shield. Yeah, I, I, I totally understand. No, I totally. That's yes. not right. Yes. I totally you're understand shield. that like the people that, um, you know, because we're accepting people based off 
you know, how they look. And if we think they're pretty or think they're hot, then it's like, okay, now those are the brave ones. Yeah. You know? No, me in a dress, that's brave. Because I can't hide this. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> so it's like basically anyway, you just have a different you, you you just figure out a different perspective. You think about different like ways you could come at the same point. And that's what I love about stand-up comedy. You know, stand-up comedy is not just about like you, I'm gonna say whatever I want to say, and then like, you know, I think also it, it is about cultivating and figuring out how to so people understand your message without them hating you for it or without them feeling like you're making me feel bad for it. Now, you're not always going to succeed because you can't please everyone. What do you want to do? What's your goal when you go up on stage? Tell me the selfish goal and the selfless goal. Um, I, I, I want people to understand my point. Why? Because I... That, you like your point. I like my point. I want people to agree with me. Do you ever, you ever not have a point? And even if they... Yeah, sometimes you're just doing something that's funny. You know, I, I just want people to agree with the point I'm making. And I, I like the idea of, like, my words are taking them down a line where they're going to go, okay, all right, I, I agree with that. Or they're going to disagree, but they understand my point. That's all I want, too. You don't have to agree with me, but I need you to understand what I'm saying. And when you understand, you laugh. That's what I want. You're not as silly as you used to be. Well, I just see yeah, that happens when you get older. Yeah? Yeah. Do you like silly? Um, I do like some silly things. So what I like to do is like, I like, see, that's the thing I like. I like to combine something silly with something very uh, serious and important. And I try to put those things together. That's what I try to do. Hey, what's your name? And what are you doing here? My name is Rick Glassman and I'm doing stand-up comedy. Oh, how long have you been doing stand-up comedy? Like 12 years now. Yeah. 12 years? And you think you're going to win this show? Well, I, I, I guess I'll leave it to you guys to, to decide that. I don't know. I, sh I certainly, I would like to. Okay, let's see what you got. Thank you. <clears throat> you ever notice bitches with little ass tits try to talk to you and you're like, I don't think so, little titty bitch. <laughs> Fuck that shit. Give me big tits or get out of my face, bitch. <laughs> so you're in the club, right? And you, get, you go to the bar and you get yourself a vodka tea or as I like to call it, daddy's secret sauce. <laughs> Medicine. It's me going, all right? And you're on the club, you're doing your shit, you know, that TikTok dance that you learn. And then, right, this beautiful honey comes up to you and she's like 35, 22, 30 years old. And then you're dancing, she's grinding on you. And then you got a boner, <laughs> okay? Because her big fat ass grind out on your cock. And then you got hard and you come. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And that's what we're talking about right there. Um, I, you know, I just, I just feel like that's, you know, because again, I also accept that not everyone is going to uh, uh, like it because of their own personal thing. Like people have their own personal stuff and they think it's the most important thing in the world, but it's not the most important thing in the world to everyone. So not everyone's going to find what you do funny, but like for the most part, I would like to think if you're going to see, I like to think that in a comedy club setting or in a comedy setting, people can be like, okay, I don't have to take everything so serious because this is what it is. This is a uh, you were, this is for laughter. It's for you know. So you'd like to think that people won't take themselves so serious, but you know we just live in a day and age where people like taking themselves. Everyone serious. says we live in a day and age. It's always been the same. I'm convinced it's all you know. Especially now, I was watching uh, AGT and Harry Mundell. Shout out to Harry Mundell. There he says. Uh, so some also. You ever watch the stand up on AGT? No. Okay. First of all, this isn't a blanketed statement to everybody that's been on there because some people who've been on there have been funny. It's not an environment to thrive. Right. And here's one of the things that makes it even harder. They don't walk out and be like, what's up, New York City? Or whatever they want to do. Yeah. They walk out and they be like, hey, what's your name? Hi, I'm, I'm Rick. Yeah. So where are you from? I'm from Cleveland originally. 
What do you do? Well, I'm going to do stand-up comedy. Are you nervous? Well, I'm hoping to make you guys laugh. Yeah. Do you think you could win this thing? I don't know, Wilson, because you can't say yes. You can't say no. So you got to say like, we'll see, you know, you know, it's up to the audience. What do you guys think? You know, whatever. All right, show me what you got. And they go, okay. What's up, New York City? You know, it's like <laughs> fucking, we, are, we already saw behind the curtain. It's so hard. They get two minutes and it's so uncomfortable. If they don't come out, Boom. But don't you think that it's uncomfortable to you because you do stand up comedy? I want to find a clip of Sofia Vergara from an episode I watched today before the, the comedian did well. By well, I mean they made it through, right? But Sofia's doing what I'm doing. She's sitting like this, yeah. waiting, please, please. There's nothing, there's nobody you want to succeed more than a stand up comic because. There's no in the middle. Yeah, 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 and yeah. And she's yeah. please somebody, especially when they come out and they're like, "I'm actually doing this because one of my kids is." Oh, I hate. He that only stuff. has one leg. Yeah, I hate and that we're about stuff. to have that new leg surgery. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. they're like, "Oh, please God, let us help him get his kid a leg." You know, yeah, I hate that. So, uh, uh, what was the point I was making at making uh, stand up on there? What was what were we talking about? Just how hard it is. How you know, like you you know the your your the different perception. I think that you feel this way about stand up. Because you do stand up. Yeah. Fuck. 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 I had a great point. Well, I'm sorry. Uh, I had a point. <laughs> I don't know how great it was. But uh, I guess we'll just conclude with stand up on AGT is hard. What were we just talking about? I don't even know. Now, now I'm confused now. <laughs> what was it right before AGT? You were going on and on about, you know, uh, and like <laughs> people's person. I was watching uh, AGT and Harry Mundell. Shout out to Harry Mundell. Was in there. He says, uh, Oh, Howie Mandel. He goes, now I remember. That's <laughs> <laughs> where back to, from what it was to this. <laughs> um, he goes, he goes, uh, it was about you saying like, you know, times are tough now. Oh, right, 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 right. And Howie goes, uh, and the comedian goes up on stage and does like their act. And then Howie goes, it's, you know, we need that last now more than ever. And I said out loud, no, we don't. Yeah. First of all, we don't. Because of all the times we've needed to last. But even if you want to talk about the last five years, we needed it more last year. Yeah, we yeah, need yeah. it. We'll always need it. And that's why this is a great business to be in. We don't need laughs more today than we well, did that's, that's of just July. Hy hyperbole, you but, know? But yeah, I guess I take things too literally. Yeah. You know, but here's the thing, Rick. Here's the thing, though. I agree with you when you say, like, when, I, when somebody says, and even I'll say it, it's like, you know, people are more sensitive, blah, 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 all this stuff. No, no, they just have more access to get their opinions out. Yeah. But I think people have been haters of comedians from the beginning. I don't want to get, the, I don't want to go down a road you know? for too long where we're talking about how audiences don't like when we, like, it's, no, but I'm all, bored No, of no, no, well, all I'm saying is that I think that's always been a thing. They just now have the ability to, like, like tell us. You know, like we like we didn't think like before you had to write a letter and put a stamp on it and be like, you know, that's harder to ignore. That's yeah. They're you know, like, no, you, you know, you don't have to open the stuff. Somebody mailed me a letter. I'm going to I'm going to. OK, it. that's you. All right. What I'm saying though is after a while, if it's if you got hundreds of letters, you know, but I'm saying that's a harder thing to do as opposed to now. It takes nothing for someone to go on your Instagram and at you. This guy's not funny. You know, it's like, so, you know, blocked, you know, <laughs> I, 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 are you a blocker now? Oh, yeah. You I've been. I've been. Because pe people like, oh, well, it's public. Da, 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 da. It's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Listen, I'm not going to come knock on your door and ask you to stop, but you're coming into my house and littering. I'm just locking you out. Word. So, <laughs> so 100 with you on this. Like. So it feels to me there's something like when someone says something, me, it feels like, so here's the thing. Let's say, X people are going to say Rick sucks in whatever version, right? Uh -huh. They're there. They're coming. They're coming to say you're ugly, you suck, you're not funny, you try to be too weird, you're yeah, like, yeah, all yeah, these yeah, things, yeah, you're, yeah. you're awkward, all these things, right? They're there. Kind of like there's spiders. There's spiders everywhere, right? I'm not, there's not new spiders coming. They're there, right? So every time someone comes out, I go, gotcha, gotcha, throwing them outside. Yeah. Not killing them. I took out a spider today, actually. <laughs> I'm throwing them out. So whenever somebody talks shit, that where it where there's even a part of me that doesn't if I don't laugh like sometimes it's like fuck you know but if it's something where it's like oh that's just fucking I don't want to read that I think good I, I now I just I leveled up I blocked another one 
I blocked another one. I get you. So I don't mind it at all. It almost it's almost like a video game, and I've collected a lot of points. <laughs> yeah, I feel I, I don't know, man. I, I feel like it just comes with it, especially when we're doing something like this. You know, it's like it's such opinion based. It's so yeah. You know, and people are like they just disagree with your opinion, or they like, and they and they want to like they want to. They're doing their mini podcast. That's yeah. the thing that's interesting. <laughs> you know what like, I mean? Like some people sometimes, uh, uh, sometimes I'll respond to comments that are mean comments, and I'll respond to it funny if I'm in the mood, or sometimes it's like, what is that? What are you? What are you doing? L- yeah, literally, yeah, literally, yeah, 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 what yeah. are you doing? And I'll say, what are you doing? Or Something where I'm I'm looking information, and more times than not, they write back. Oh my gosh, I can't believe you responded. I'm such a fan. No, 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 no. See, I, I, that's okay. I, I think I, I believe that you get some of those, but I would like to. Th- I think that you get a lot of those. Like, also, they say, "Oh, I'm just kidding, man." Thought you were a comic. I thought you could, you know, take a joke. Yeah, yeah I see those too. Yeah, but, those, but, th- but those are the ones I don't understand. I know. Oh, you're just trying to be funny. Well, well I just go. No, no. The, I, I. I, I don't respond to those. Right. Like, I know when some, I, I can get a sense of this person's literally just an asshole. You yeah. know? Like, I just go, oh, okay. I can tell by yeah. the nature of this sentence. Blocked. You're being an asshole. So I just go, I go, I'm not going to give them any time. What well, I don't block them because then they, then they, they win. In my mind, they've won. <laughs> so really? I just, yeah. I just restrict them. Oh, that's I, what I mean. I restrict. I restrict. I still want the number. I go, I hide my story. This is, this is my process. Restrict, hide story, remove follower. That's all I do. Oh, yeah. Sometimes I will, I, will, uh, I will block so then they no longer follow me, and then I'll unblock so they don't see that I blocked them, but I'm not coming up on their feed anymore. Is that what you're talking about? No, no, you don't have to do that anymore, Rick. There's a thing called remove follower. Oh. You, could, you could just remove the follower. But... uh let's move on to a new subject yeah although that one did get me a little bit that like there was I fun tell- to talk about that no 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 i mean i, I guess I was bored as hell like this i'm first still half worked hour. i'm still worked up about this freaking like this this freaking comment of somebody like you know it's like I, it's like i'm doing something new it's the first day of this thing and this guy wants to send me a message and that's like terrible man uh you know if you need my help you know let me know and then like you think on day one what if this guy's an awesome producer no but here's the thing though even if do you think on day one, that's the kind of message I think I'm going to be like, oh, yeah, you know what? Let me scrap everything that we've been working on because, you know, dude with six, 62 followers, it, you know, is, it's so great. Isn't that funny you that we, I mean? we give people weight <laughs> on their critique based on how many followers they have? But you, it, you know what I'm saying? But here's the thing, though. So the things you're saying <laughs> on your Instagram, nobody cares about. Yeah, like so when someone what? tweets so you and they got an egg, and yeah. it's like, oh, not, even, yeah, if, even I, if it's I, a yeah, compliment, yeah, 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 I'm yeah. out. I'm out. <laughs> you're so funny, really? Then how come you don't have followers? No one cares what you think. <laughs> I feel that way about critics. When I see a <laughs> yeah. critic that works for, like, a magazine, right? So this, you, you, that critic is like writing some scathing thing, right? And then you go, they're, they're on like the Washington Post or whatever. I like to go to their Instagram and I look and see like, actually, no one gives a crap sure. about what you have to say. Your regular life is so boring that, you know, why are you like, why do you have any weight at all? You know? Well, why- no, no <laughs> one who is, I, this is blanketed, but I, I think when I say, I, I think actually no one, but maybe few people who are creative and are creating are criticizing. Right. I don't even mean that they're successful, but just like- Yeah, 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 yeah. You they, know- There's a respect for what other people are doing. You know how hard it is to make something. Yes. Not make something good. That's, you don't, that, you just, that doesn't happen. Just to make something. How much time and work, you said on your new podcast- That's what I'm saying, Rick. That's what pisses me off about this comment. Like this guy is not taking into account like he doesn't know all the freaking work that goes into making something and so your first thing you want to say is well you know it's terrible uh you know hit me up if you want to make it good hey bro <laughs> i wish i had some water to be perfect i got you we'll be right back oh man there's some huge shit Whoa, what's 
so cute. I think that this fits. It's a small cutting. I'm Kevin Bacon's daughter, and I take huge shits. Okay, great. Yeah, this guy has 27 followers. <laughs> well, 26 because I told him to text you now. I just did an episode. So let's go in here. Remove follower. Uh, remove. And Why didn't you do it before? I just I forgot because I just I literally saw it when I was walking in. I asked you at the beginning of this podcast. I'd like to ask you again because I don't think you heard. Are you happy? Yeah. Like your status quo, you're normally happy. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, I, uh, I'm I'm pretty happy. Uh, I, you know, I think people get caught up in like you know, like I like I always say, that would now have embraced like my brand is. I like to complain about things. I like to bitch about things. That's my brand. It's always been your brand. Yeah, it's always been my brand. But I used to like fight against that. When people say that, I'd be like, man, I'm just being. You know, now I just go, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. People go, you complain. I know. Uh, you want to hear some more? Yeah. You know what I mean? So I, I, now I'm just like, oh, let me just em, let me just embrace what it's all about. You know what I mean? Because like, you know, because like, that used to get me. Like people would be like, oh, man, you're complaining about stuff. And I just go, dude, you don't see the humor in this. So that's the person I just go, oh, they don't get it. I don't care. You know, I was I just move on. On Trash Tuesday, uh, Esther asked me, uh, they were wearing lingerie and they said, uh, Rick, take off your shirt. And I said, I, I'm just not body confident at the moment. I don't <laughs> I, I'm not. Uh Cut to a clip. We can't see. I don't want to. It's a lingerie. Up. Show us. I don't. I don't really want. I don't really. Show us what Betty gets to have sun, every night. No, it's pale. <laughs> wow, you're you're insecure. It's okay. Yeah, I, I understand. I know. I'm sure you do. You <laughs> piece of shit. <laughs> Fuck. Could you edit out? Don't uh, edit that out because you're not supposed to say stuff about weight because everyone's beautiful. But the truth Don't is, <laughs> heavy people are beautiful if there's some, you know. But there's just nothing, <laughs> nothing about you, you know. You're just a pawn that Do could only get... move one space on the first turn. And I, I said, I'm, and then I said, making fun of me. She goes, "Oh, you're insecure." And I went, "Yeah, <laughs> I, um, yeah. I don't, I'm yes." I just said that. I just said. I just said I, you know what I mean? The specific yeah, yeah. <laughs> that I'm not secure with this. But but like that same thing of like, oh, you're did it. someone, it's that tone. Oh, Eric, you fucking love Mario Brothers shirts. No, I don't. Like, yeah, yeah, why? But because of that, I think that some people are conditioned to the, eh, de, 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 and you go, yes. eh, 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 you know? You know what? And, and now I find myself being happier just embracing it. To the point where I even made a segment on my podcast, bitching with Griffin time. You know, oh, even Eric. even on stage. <laughs> oh, yeah. Cut you, to Eric talking about he's bad at marketing himself. Yeah, <laughs> I know. But even on stage, sometimes I'll be like, "Hey, can I bitch about something?" It's kind of my brand, you know. Yeah. And then people laugh, and they get you know. So I just go, "Yeah, you know, let me embrace that." Like, if you don't want to hear that, if you're a person that's like, "Well, I don't want to hear that," I go, "Okay, we'll move on." But at the same time, though, like I was talking about earlier with stand up, sometimes I am like, sometimes I'll be like, okay, here's a bit where I'm bitching about something. All right, so why am I bitching about this? Let me make the joke about this point, and maybe I could come at it in a way where I'm like experiencing something it's, as opposed to bitching about it. You didn't say this, but I think this is what you meant, but I want to let the audience in on this. It's a very powerful uh, technique. You find the thing that it up, but how, how do I? How do I put myself in it? That's what you're saying, right? Yeah. Like, why does it? Why does this trigger me? Why right. does this affect me? Right. And what if that's not funny? Then it's not funny. Then you move on. I mean, that's the whole thing. You just don't. I don't get married. I don't. I'm not married to material. You know what I mean? It's just like th that's that's the thing. But that's the challenge. What if you? That's wh why, what about that, when you get married? That's what I love. Oh, Jesus Christ. That's why I love doing stand-up comedy. I love the challenge of that. My thing is I love I love to be challenged. I love to try to make something that people would be like, yeah. I don't think you can make that funny. And I'll be like, oh, you don't think so? I'm going to make this funny. I just like that. Yeah. It doesn't always work. Is it a chip on the shoulder thing? Yeah, yeah. I like having a chip on my shoulder about like, like what can I talk about? What can I not talk about? And like, I like to push it. I want to push it and see if people will come on board with me. Do you, you think know? you're... Uh, uh also, I want to bring up Brent Morin because that's something he he's so good. The idea of like, you're this and to not get upset. Brent is so fun to be around. And so one of his things is 
is uh, Brent, you're, th- th- whatever you say, he'll, he'll, even if he doesn't think so, he'll just go, I know. <laughs> and there's something so disarming yes. and nice about that because whether you mean the thing or yeah. not, it's so nice being around people yes, yes, who yes, are yes. just like, yes. and that expands even bigger to podcasting. And it's something now that I've been watching myself that I'm getting better at, which is like, just keep the flow, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. know, and even if you don't, like you said to me earlier, uh, you brought up when I brought up about other people's podcasts. And then like, you know, people say you're funny on yours. And then I said, well, people still like mine because I did want to say that. And you went, look who's being defensive. And yeah. you notice what I did? <laughs> I went like this. <laughs> so, and, and I saw you maybe cut to it. Talk about defensive. Um, but it's like, it's like. I saw you, you then kind of stumbled. You went, look who's being defensive. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> but like, just take it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just you know take what? And, it. And, and that being said, you know, it's like, like I say, my thing is, like, if you're going to send me some scathing thing, if you're criticizing me, right, initially, I am going to have, like, a reaction, you know? If you tell me I don't like that shirt, it looks stupid, hey, man. But then I always, after, I'm going to look in the mirror and be like, does this shirt look stupid? Let me check. Uh, yeah. And then I can go, no, nah, I like it, and I'm okay with that. But I don't think there's anything wrong with, like, you know, it's like, I don't, the, the thing that pisses me off is the sentiment of it, okay? The entitlement. So, the entitlement. of So yeah, again, yeah. so here's this guy with 27 followers who says he's a big producer, you know, and he thinks on day one that this is the time to write a, a message to someone who believes in this thing that they're doing. Like the sentiment of that is what I'm upset about. Uh, I want to move on past this. This is no, too no, much no, on no, that. No, but what I'm saying is, what I'm saying is like, you know, it's what I'm saying is it's okay to just embrace like, yeah, I'm, I'm having a reaction. And then you just go, okay, all right, yes. So I, it, it makes it does make you happier. You know what I mean? Your complaining is uh, different than my complaining, but it's both of our love languages. Like, you know, I'm Jewish. That's what we do. You complain. Yeah. Your complaining is, uh, I, I'm just trying to find like the difference. My, my complaining is about me. Your complaining is about others. Like I'll complain about my podcast and my stomach and I don't know how to do this. And you'll complain about his podcast and his stomach and how he doesn't know how to do this. You know what I mean? Not necessarily, but I just think like I, my complaining is like I, because I know it's funny. Like my, what I'm saying is like, I know that like it's how I'm talking about something that people laugh. I've always been aware of that. How true is this observation? It's funny because you mean it so much. Yes. And it's not just, you've gotten I'm good invested. at complaining. I'm invested in what I'm saying. Yeah, you got it. And that's why people laugh. They're just like, wow, you're really taking that serious, no matter what I'm talking about. Because even when you talk about American Idol and the things you like about it, it still works. Yes. So you are funny as a complainer because you have so many things that bother you. But you know how to make stuff funny that you care about. What happens in stand up when you just don't care about shit for a couple months? Oh, well, I just, I, I, I know that I'm just a robot. So I know that here's a set I know works, and I'm just going to do that. And I'm going to. Are your eyes gla- glazed and over? And I'm going to practice just being funny. I'm going to practice stage presence and delivery and make sure because we are acting, and it's my job. Yeah. You know what I mean? My job is to make people laugh, not to like, you know, be self indulgent about whatever, even though that's a part of it when in the process of making these jokes. But, you know, we're professionals. You know what I mean? Tell me the difference between you going on stage with an act that works because you found it, uh-huh. right? But you're not, you don't care. And you're being a professional and you know the beats and the cadence, right? Yeah. That's this, A. And B is you haven't quite, you found it enough. You haven't done it yet, right? You're on the, the, the earlier end of it, but you believe it and you care and you're excited. A, you're not believing it as much, but you've got it tight. And B is you're still finding it, the beats aren't down, but you're, you care, What's the diff? Is there a difference for audience reaction? I'm talking audience reaction and how you feel it's going. Um, I know I because that other thing you're saying a is there, home, was, there was there was a point that I really did care about these things, right? You know, and so now I'm acting as yeah. if I care, right? You That's know? a you're yeah. acting as if you care. Yeah. Don't you think? Do you think that B when you haven't found it yet, but you still care? Is there an intangible an energy? that is 
what we were talking about, you complaining. We like it not because we also hate that this guy has 26 followers. We like it because we see what it does to you and we could empathize right. what something else does yes. to me that way. Yes, yes, yes. Could you act that well as, as opposed to when you're actually feeling the seethingness? And I'm saying to you, I do. Yeah. Because that's what I do. Well, then let me see the obesity joke. No, I, I, I'm, I'm still working it out. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm yeah. working out, you know, because like I've done it a few times now where it's like I go, ooh, this isn't it yet. Mm -hmm. Like I, what I'm saying is I could tell, oh, this is this is too harsh or people don't get me yet. And I make I, to me, I'm like I'm making these good points, but I have to put it together in an act. I have to make it flow. So I have like sections and I'm trying to put them together. So like last night I got into it differently. Last night I started talking about COVID and then went into this and I was like, oh, that worked better. So sometimes you just I'm still working it out, man. I'm still, Do you ever not want to practicing. work something out at a certain place? Uh, it just depends on the night. So at the comedy store, for instance, if it's a Tuesday night, I, I'm going to work on some shit. But if it's like Friday, Saturday, I know that the, the place is full and these people are here for a show. They don't right. care about what I'm doing. People there on Tuesday aren't there for a show? How is uh, that different? Uh, I have to pick and choose because I don't do open mics. You yeah. know, I have to just pick and choose. But why is the Friday? Is it because more people are there? There's more people there and it feels like an event because it's Friday, Saturday right. night. It's the weekend for people. Is there something to where you also feel that other people are doing that so you have to carry your weight? Um, that's what the store turned into for the last five years. I'm actually glad now it feels more like a workout room again. Uh, but you know, it's like, you know, you see people, you see like someone like Neil Brennan, for instance, you know, on Tuesday night, he has his notebook and he's putting it right, you know, and yeah. he's looking at it and he's like, you know, oh, here's a joke I want to work on. And so the crowd gets it too. I think that the crowd likes watching our process. Yeah. I think they, I think they that's get, why they watch this. I, I think like they get something out of like being like, oh, this is a new joke he's doing right now. And even last night I, 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 I said something on stage for the first time in the middle of a bit I always do. And I and I, I, I did something and I went and I was so happy with it. And I was like, oh man, I've never said that before like that. Thanks for helping me work on that crowd. You know, and I saw them, they were like, oh wow, we just, you know, they felt like they were a part of something, you know. So, you know, there's always those kinds of moments, you know. So I just feel like I I I have I have full confidence in my ability as a stand-up comic that even on, even on a Friday night, I'm I might be like, I'm gonna work on this, but I know I'm gonna give them what they want. So there might be one thing I'm going to work on. So I don't do a thing where it's like, I'm going to work on a whole new act. I have a point of emphasis. When I used to coach basketball, I always had this. I'd be tell the kids, today, your point of emphasis, we need to get... You, our point of what, coach? Emphasis. We need to get 50 <laughs> rebounds as a team or something. Something like that, let's say. If we get 50 rebounds, guys, we, this, is, this is what we want to do as a team. Here's my... You my, know what I mean? My, my mind is now going to cut to you back then. I love, the, I love when people show that it was earlier by just putting a wig with longer hair on the person, you know, <laughs> with, a, with a bunch of kids, 50 rebounds, they only get 30, and that's why you quit <laughs> and get in the stand-up. But what I'm saying, though, is like, you know, you have these small victories. It's like each kid, even each kid, you could be like, what is the thing you need to work on you need to add to your game? Let's not try to work on everything at once. Let's try to work on this. So today I want you to go out of your way to, like, get, you know, be, you get more assists, or you say put that in stand up. No turnovers. Do, use you know? the analogy. Uh, literally. So in stand up, it's going to be like I'm like I I have this bit I want to work on. So I want to work. Make sure I work on that bit today, and that's only going to be three minutes of my 15 minutes. And then you listen to it. You always listen to it. Yeah, you're going to listen to it and be like, okay, why didn't that work? You know, and then and then you then after that, once I've done that, everything else is just gravy because I know I'm going to get the crowd back. I know I'm going to make everybody laugh. So if it's like if it's like I'm working on this new bit and let's say it doesn't go well, it's like one of the tricks is to be like, well, uh, that will be funny in like a month, guys. And then they'll be like, ha, 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 right. they get us a new Acknowledging joke. Acknowledging is they, a they device. Yeah, yeah. And then I go, all right, let me, let me do the stuff that I know that works. Coach me a little bit. I'm going to ask you some specific questions about me as a stand-up and give me a little coaching. Yeah? Okay. Um, I don't know how familiar you are with my stand-up anymore. Yeah, I haven't seen you in so long. But you get it yeah, yeah, enough, yeah, yeah. you yeah, know? Yeah. Uh, I, f I, uh, cut to Rick juggling jank chainsaws. Woo. How'd that feel? <laughs> I'm sorry, Tom. <laughs> whoa, 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 Rick. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> ow, ow. Okay. And we're back. You got to pay me back for that. <laughs> so one of the things that's that, that I've seen to either create as an obstacle or it chooses me is I'm, uh, I'm weird, yeah. right? Uh, sometimes I'll lean into it. Sometimes it's like, I, this is, I'm just a guy, right? I sometimes, when things don't go a certain way, I go, 
It happens in the podcast. Sometimes I go, whatever. And you just check out? I either check out or if I'm on stage, I'll have to, I'll have to like, we're down by 30. <laughs> you know, we got one play left <laughs> and you just fucking throw it. Um, what do you do? I, I, I guess, let me reword this. What happens when the audience doesn't care and you don't care, but you're up there? Well, I mean, that just sounds like a disaster. But the thing I want to say to you, my, my coaching for that is, what is your expectation when you're on stage? Yeah. Like, what are you looking for? Like, when you go on stage, what's your expectation? Brilliant. So when my expectation is, expectation is when I have something I want to say, you can't bomb. You can't. Okay. And that is why you fail. Why is that? Because the thing is, you have to like try to step outside of yourself and be an audience member for a second. Oh, of course, I, I, I've you know said, I, I mean? need to be an audience member. You know, when you're looking at yourself and you have to, well, you have to say, you have to say to yourself like, "What is this message that I'm trying to get across?" Or what? Well, is that's my, what I'm saying. But I know I'm saying, "What is my performance?" Like, it's not always about like I really stop worrying about the crowd laughing. You know, same. You know, it's like the the, the that is not why. You know, it's like it's more like a response. It, you know, I'm waiting for a response. If yeah. I don't get a response, I go, I take it upon myself. So most of the time, I'm going to be like, oh, I didn't do that one right. Tell me, I want to make sure we're on the same page because you're saying because it's why I keep asking what we have something to say. And it's why I will sometimes not do stand up as much as people. People will be like, you got to do da, 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 da. And if you have a commitment to a weekend, sure. But my thoughts are if I don't have something to say, I don't want to go up. Okay, and this is what I'm saying yeah, to you yeah. is okay. like, you have to start to be aware of why you are funny. And it is not as much about the things you're saying as you think. I think the percentage of why you are funny is more about your weirdness and stage presence than it is the things you're actually talking about because they go hand in hand. And what I'm saying is you could just be up there, be comfortable with yourself and your weirdness, and I think the crowd will enjoy whatever road you take them on because you're establishing, hey, I'm a weird guy. I talk about weird things in a weird way. Do you, Once that's is that just, true? Yes. So Everything, even, even when it's, I'm being honest, which I, I, I am. That's fine. What I'm saying is I'm weird. How you are being honest is portrayed in a very outside the box right. weird way. Yeah, yeah. Once you embrace that, it won't matter because then you could even just have a notebook with you and be like, man, all right, you know, guys, that one didn't work right. And then you might do some weirdness even about the notebook, and you're going to be uncomfortable with like why people are laughing. I get that. I, I don't I, think you're. A, I, I get. The, I think you get it. But what I'm saying is, I don't really know if you really understand why you're funny. And I think that's a problem for most people. Um, I, 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 I'm not going to concede to that, nor am I going to uh, object to it. I, I haven't. It's something to think about anyway. Yeah. It's not even something I'm, I don't need you to answer that right now. I just need you to really think about I th why am I funny? Let me, let me keep talking about this. Uh -huh. Putting that it's still on the table, but here's, here's another thing. I don't need the audience to laugh. I, uh, I, obviously, I would love it. But I do... the. The reaction I'm looking for is I want them to care, be interested, invested with laughs, right? But like I want them to care. So I, uh, one of, you know, as humans, we all feel this way. But one of my things that I learned and, I, you know, it's not an autism thing, but, you know, I don't think it helps is I do have a very, very hard time understanding uh, intuitively that you, the audience or anybody isn't thinking what I'm thinking. Right. We all think and project that. But like, I never realized that was a thing. That's one of the, you know, the work that I do is, is recognizing I don't understand it, but we know it exists. It's very hard for me to accept that the audience isn't thinking everything I'm thinking. It's a, it's a big roadblock for me. So when I don't really care that much, what I've done, and I don't love it, but it's a, it saves, is just being present and talking about what you're feeling. But the craft of just doing the same thing over and over again, it's, that's is what I'm saying making sense at all? Yes, and the thing is, this is so, it's so weird that you say that. So break this down, like break it down about what you just said. 
Because to me, that's what jokes are in the first place. Let me explain. You said the crowd doesn't know what I'm thinking. No, no, no. I I'm saying the opposite. I'm saying I always felt and I still intuitively without like, you know, using my, my tools, the audience is thinking what I'm thinking. Oh, you think the audience is thinking what you're thinking. It I think the audience is thinking what I'm thinking. So I will sometimes, I do it on this podcast. I'll over communicate or like, I, I, I'm so, I hate lying. I get very uncomfortable lying. So if, if I know what I'm saying is X, Y, Z, and I, hey guys, listen, that's not, here's, here's an example, literal and an analogy. When I see a comedian say uh, for the eighth time, I was at, uh, I was at Vaughn's a couple of days ago and I saw I saw this girl, blonde hair, beautiful, right? I don't, I don't like blondes. All I'm hearing is, you weren't at Vaughn's the other day. Whenever I catch something like that that feels like a lie, anyway, is what I'm saying making sense to you? Yes, and what I'm saying to you, what you just did right now is a bit. See, who yes. you are, yeah, yeah. who you are is a bit. Like that's, I saw in my head now a five-minute chunk about that. And that's explaining who you are and how you think about things. And now moving forward in your act, every time you say something, you could sometimes be like, yeah, that one was true. You know, and they're gonna laugh because they they're on board with you. So what I'm saying to you is explaining to the crowd who you are and how you think, that is the setup. Yeah. You know tell me tell me what you think of, of this statement. I I don't want to talk about autism on stage because it feels like a cop-out. I don't mean that entirely, but there is something to that. Okay, I understand what you're saying, but having autism uh, as, as it affects you so much, it would be like a dude that goes on stage with no arm and never mentions it, okay? Now, I'm not saying you have to always delve into the thing, but it does. T-shirts, I'm the autism guy. <laughs> <laughs> all, all I'm saying is like, it's like, you know, you can't just not talk about this because. It I can. I, no, no, no. You don't have to talk about it. And it's like, hey, guys, I have autism. What I'm saying is you, it can be wrapped up in your stage persona with how you're talking about things, how you're getting into subjects. People later, you, you, even if later you go, by the way, I have autism, then people are going to go, oh, okay, well, that explains, but that could be a joke in itself. What I'm saying is you don't have to like, you don't have to explain yourself to everyone because you feel, and this might not be true or not, but this is like a, you know, that you feel you're not like everyone else, you know? So, I'm not understanding. So what I'm saying is like, you know, I like you feel like, well, I got to go up here and explain that I have autism so I can continue to do comedy. I don't No, no. What I'm saying is what I'm saying is I like what you're talking about. Here's what I want to do. I want everyone who knows me to know that I have autism or well, yes, for this reason. I want everyone who knows me to know that, oh, Rick isn't R Rick's. I don't want people to. Uh, constantly make fun of me and bust my balls because things make me uncomfortable or I don't understand certain things or I ask certain questions and I, and I don't want I don't want to I don't want to have to make jokes when I bring the hand sanitizer to you I don't want to have to worry that somebody's going to make fun of me because I don't understand something and I'm asking too many questions I don't want people to think I'm annoying because the same thing I'm I, I don't understand or I tried to connect in a way that they didn't connect with and they think I'm just trying to be weird. I don't want those things. And what I have found is you're a perfect example. Once you found out this thing about me, you were more accepting of me. Yeah. My general practitioner, or should I say my ex-general practitioner doctor, once he found out, I, did I ever tell you that story? Blocked. <laughs> <laughs> did I ever tell you that story? I was seeing a doctor no. and uh, I, had, uh, I was going in for my shoulder surgery, but I was seeing him for one of the other things that I was seeing him for. While I'm in there, he's a doctor. I go, by the way, I'm, you know, my shoulder surgery, do you think it's whatever the question was? And he goes, I, I don't know. I, I don't know. I only have so much time. That's when it first cued me. And then I had to go into him again pre-surgery because that's what you have to do. Uh -huh. And uh, he comes in and he's a little short with me. And I go, do you not like when I come in here? And he goes, whenever I see it's your name on the door, I take a deep breath. And this was pre-diagnosis. And I said, that sucks, man. You're my doctor. 
And I don't know, a couple months, less than a year later, I got the diagnosis. I see him again and I told him and he goes, oh, that makes the doctor said that makes so much sense. He apologized to me. Yeah. And then as I did. And then he <laughs> kept talking to me about the Dodgers, I, like trying to. And I don't know anything about baseball. He's yeah. just trying. What I'm getting at is I'm the same person, but he just needed this information, whether it's autism or he's whatever the thing might be. Autism is just a variable as far as I'm concerned in this situation. He just needed a reason to accept that this is what it is. I want to be able to do that on stage without having to lean on autism, but also I don't want to have to stay away from it because people judge a diagnosis. Okay, all right. Let me get. Let me. Does that makes sense. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. But what I'm saying is, you still have to look at this as a stage performance. Mm -hmm. This is a stage performance. Does Bobcat? Did Bobcat uh, talk like that in real life? You know, did so, Sam, but I'm not doing a no, character no, no, this, always. But you are. This is this is what I'm trying to say is but you can't we I are, can't oh, but not, we are doing a character we are doing a heightened version of ourselves on stage that is a character okay a lot of the time okay. but not always I I under I I don't believe that all right for me this is a character of ourselves this is a portion of our personality I believe that and we are doing a we are doing a stage performance we are yes. doing a performance and I have that in mind so what I'm saying is Stephen Wright. Does he talk like that with his... Uh, You're naming characters. Character comedians, though. It, 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 even, even if uh, Bill Burr... Bill Burr doesn't talk like that offstage. He doesn't. Have you sat down and had conversations with him? Yeah. He doesn't... Yeah, he, he does. Not always. He's but not like... He's not that heightened version of himself when he's offstage. Okay. He's not that guy. Okay. Uh, there's a lot of people that are like that. When they get on stage, they're a heightened version of themselves. Let's move forward because I'll concede Kevin to Hart that is a heightened version of himself. Sure, they're not. He's not this boisterous big guy off stage. Everybody is a heightened version of whatever this this character they're making. Okay. Once you embrace that, then you 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 can start to cultivate it in a way that I'm doing an act. This isn't therapy I'm doing on mm -hmm. stage. This is like you know. So it's it's just the idea of like embracing. All right. I'm going to be this character on stage. So what I'm saying to you is the thought to me should be, no, be a character because you're already being a character. You Tell know? me what you think of it. You've seen, do you, you know, I do, I do a lot of stuff that is character. That's a very heightened version of it. So heightened that it's ridiculous. Like these things I'm saying and doing aren't out of nowhere, but they're just cartoon bits, right? Uh -huh. But I have, I mean, I do now for years. I, I, it's not sustainable to just be that. So yeah. I still want to show who I am in it. But you're saying even who I am needs to be a character. Yes. Yes. Because what I'm saying is we all get pigeonholed into things. You think Burt Kreischer wants to take his shirt off all the time? Yes. I asked him. He's, he says he is literally more comfortable that way. I, we've all had different conversations with Bert, okay? Uh -huh. So I'm telling you that I know there's a part of him. Sometimes it's like, damn it. Sometimes I want to do bits about. Then why whatever. doesn't he just not take his because shirt off? Because you get because he's a millionaire from taking his shirt off. Like sometimes we get pigeonholed into these characters too. I mean, so that's Zac the, Efron refused to take his shirt off after a little bit. He started taking it off again. Yeah, because the, the parts weren't coming. <laughs> I mean, it just happens like that. You know, it's what we, this is what we were talking about earlier about being like, you know, typecasted. What I'm saying is, you know, you just have to decide what you want to do. It's like it's like Larry the Cable Guy. He's not that guy. Yeah, you keep Stephen Wright, Larry the Cable Guy, uh, Bobcat. You're naming guys that are literally big characters. I know you're a big character. That's the thing you don't, you know. That's this, this this so opposite of what you're saying. Like you know, you're saying all these things about yourself and about how hard it is to do this and this and that and all that stuff. That is a character to me. When I watch you do stand up, I'm I know I'm watching. Uh, this is like a, a you know almost like a, like like equivalent to a magic act or something. You know, mm. you're doing like a character, and then people are laughing because you're finding these points. You know, the jokes are in there. But what I'm saying is, I think it's going to really take off when you just embrace that. When you just embrace that, you know, yep. you'll find a way, and that's the challenge to like express that you're different from everybody else. But you don't even have to express that because you're being different from everyone else. Like you don't even have to acknowledge it or say it. You you are already different from everyone else. There is some satisfaction in in some feelings and realizations I've had um, doing stand up where there's a confidence in like 
I mean, this is such a big human nature statement that we want to have, but there are some times when you go up there and you're like, I'm enough, or, but literally, not just I'm good enough, but, but literally like, this is enough. There's no, you don't have to hide. But does that, does that first part make sense? You don't have to hide? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But with that, this is enough, you don't have to hide. It's, it's that battle of, well, then I don't want to be a character of myself. Like, I, I don't know. I just want to be honest. Even when I'm joking, I want to be honest. And sometimes it just feels like, I don't know. It's just, it's boring, <laughs> you know? Well, but, but that, I I, even the jokes, I, I look, it's just boring. But that's the idea of, that's why we work on it. Yeah. That's why you have to go out and do stand up all the time. I'm, I'm, I need to. You know, that's exactly why it, you have Eric. to go. Um, well, I'm doing my Eric and friends at the uh, improv lab again. So could I come on? Just come on the next one. You know what I mean? When's the next one? Um, I think it's October or something or other. I'll look and see. Okay. I'll well, tell you. Leo, let me know if this is out before, then I'll put yeah. that up. So, um, yeah, man. So, I just need to go up more. Yeah. You have to go up more. It's like, that. by the way, that to me is a like that's you don't you don't respect stand up comedy enough to understand that you can't just you can't just sit here and have funny thoughts and then like okay I'll go perform every now and then and it's gonna we'll, be we'll great. take it easy yeah because before the pandemic I was going up constantly were you yeah I never saw you I wasn't going I wasn't doing great shows I was still doing open mics okay and, I didn't know and, that and, and little bullshits con constantly I mean I'm going up you know, three times, sometimes more, but at least three times a week. Yeah. So it's not constant. I would love to do more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm going yeah. up all the time. Well, I still think that you've, you've cultivated an audience here where it's time for you to, like, go out and, yeah. like, practice this stuff with these people I, that know you. Listen, man, I got this. I got my, I wasn't comfortable until I got my second vaccine. I got my second vaccine when I was out of town. I've been out of town for a couple of months. I just got back. And now I'm feeling like, all right, I'm ready to do this. But I also feel like, how the fuck do I even get shows? You know, I'm not, I mean, I'm not really complaining. I'll figure it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you just do what you do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like, yeah. Also, this wasn't, uh, my. I, did, I didn't want this to feel like a, I don't know how to, what no, no, am no, I? No, but you're not, it's that's just, not what it was. Yeah, I'm just no, in like, like no, no, coaching, the, talking. Dude, dude, there's a meta discussion. There's like a higher discussion about like, you know, stepping, like you, in, we're intellectualizing stand-up comic and then stand-up comedy. And then you forget about all that stuff. You know, go just, just do it. But just having like an intellectual conversation about how comedy works and why things are funny. I mean, I say this all the time. Most people don't know why their jokes are funny and they don't even know what the joke's actually about. Let me. They're just saying something funny and they think, but maybe, you know, they maybe it's a buzzword in there and they go oh this joke's about this but maybe if you understood exactly what this joke was about and why it's funny it might turn into something more and it leads you to other things it's just we all have that problem i here's a, a reason if not the reason why i'm funny when i'm funny it's because i'm i'm being honest and i i i think that i mean that's why you're funny we were talking about it before you're complaining it's not that I hate this guy with 26 followers. It's that we see you and we see why you're being this way. It's yeah, but a lot of times if I've talked about something that upset me, I'm not upset about it anymore. Right. But when I go on stage, I'm acting like I'm upset because that's the job. That's the craft, that's baby. That's the craft. That is the craft. Yes. And that's where I need to grow. Right. I know that. That's what I'm saying. And I will do that by getting up more. Yeah. But I do want to tell you, Eric. Uh-huh. I'm 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 okay at stand up. <laughs> I'm an okay stand up comedian. But I'm can, can, can I ask you can I ask you something? Are you, right. Will you ask uh, how you're am going, I you, playing or am I being honest with you? You're going to the doctor. He's about to do a major surgery on you, and your doctor says, you know, I'm okay at surgery. And and I, <laughs> yeah, and I go, I go, I don't want to see you, doctor. <laughs> and that's why I don't want to go on tour yet. Because I I can. I could go on tour now, and that's so rewarding. But unfortunately, as this podcast has done this over the past two years, I stopped doing stand-up for a year and a half. Well, it's okay. I think that you named the tour Getting Back Out and Working on My Act Tour. Did I tell you? I told somebody this. I don't remember <laughs> if it was on a podcast. I had this idea of if a venue would allow it, ticket sales being – uh, the, the ticket price being where I, what I think I'm worth at the moment. And like doing tickets, like $12 tickets, and you're getting a $12 show. And if you want to wait until the $25 ticket or whatever that you go to, you know what I'm saying? But Rick, I'm sure you could find some local venue 
if you wanted oh, to. I will. Yeah, I just got I, vaccinated. You know, and you could just start like, you know, doing like a monthly show, you know? That's what I should do. Yeah, I yeah, should start just, doing. You know, do just, you host your show? Yeah, I host it. I don't want to host it. I could. I have Iron Show. No, no, you can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't. You don't. You do whatever you want to do. But I'm just saying. Yeah, I got to host because then you could work on things. I could work, work, work. Maybe I should get off stage and then come back on. You like doing it at the lab? Yeah, it's fine. Right. Where would you like to do it? Um, Of course, if if, if, like the first one I did, it was great. We had it was like uh, almost sold out, like all the that little place. So I was like, okay, this is cool. So maybe I could find a maybe I could find a a bigger place and do it once a week at a bigger spot. So I don't. I'm trying to build. You know, I'm trying to work on it. I'm I'm out here doing stuff. I'm on King and the Sting a lot. I got my Riffin with Griffin. And why are you doing King and the Sting all the time now? They just have you on as a guest, or are you part of the show now? Are you Um, part of the Sting? I think I I think it's like I've been on so many episodes now. You know, it's like it's they want it to be a regular thing. We're talking about it right now. So if it's a regular thing, it's great. It's a fun little show. It's got a big fan base yeah. and i'm just like you know i'm i'm ciphering those fans so like hey come over and watch me uh, do my thing you told come me watch before me live yeah you don't want to cipher other podcast fans um uh, but now no 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 i don't not not for no no i like for my new podcast like people that are fans of me that are fans from like you know bad friends all these kind of people that have that sort of negative energy about podcasting i hope they don't go watch my new podcast because i want you know these the people that i want fresh new people who are like oh this is an interesting concept older guy younger guy talking about the different generations these people that are like man where's bobby where's that you know i'm like okay you you'll get that on the other thing where could people uh see whenever this comes out came out to, well no no i'm talking a, about your stand-up first oh where can people see do you post where your shows are on yeah yeah, yeah. if you go to my website ericgriffin.com and you i have the schedule thing right there and you can see I, I'm, I'm out on the road again and i'm working on my bits man do you I, think a lot of people that know your podcast is there a big percentage of them that have not seen you do stand-up yes uh, that's just always a thing. People don't know I do stand up, but people, you know, it's, it's it's just a thing. You know, they don't know you do stand up. Yeah, yeah. sometimes really, people, you'd be surprised how people go. I didn't know you did stand up. I thought you were just a funny guy from Workaholics that goes on podcasts. Yeah, I want people to see uh, your stand up. Yeah, well, me too. <laughs> you ever think about putting some on? I have on the podcast. Oh, uh, just on the podcast. Uh, a clip. I don't know. Maybe you know. It's just it's. Um, I never thought of doing it like that, but maybe I should. I'd be how I rebrand. I, I, I'd be. It'd be like Seinfeld. Like before the episode, I, I, I uh, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But you know well, what, I mean? what you would basically do is you, you either know what your theme is, or you would record after the podcast. You do like that's that's great, man. If like every. Even if even if it, your your stand up is only for the podcast and the audience just has to deal with it for a second, yeah. Like <laughs> like this one, the stand up could be, man, fucking followers, huh? You know, and like people, people, what are you talking about? <laughs> You're just trying to get that like 10, 15 second in front of a yeah. That could be cool. Yeah. So I, I you know, so I I knew, but again, that has to do with like marketing and stuff, like getting yourself out there and like. So I just actually hired somebody to help me. With social media and somebody like, different than who helps you the podcast. Yeah, 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 yeah. To help us, like you know, doing posts and doing all these kinds of things. And so, you know, I, I, I'm actually enjoying it more now than I have in the past. I'm enjoying all this. I'm enjoying the ride. You know, I'm enjoying like this is fun. This is how it is. Yeah. You know, I booked a pilot. It didn't get picked up, but I was like, oh, I'm still in that. I can still do that. I'm still in the mix. I, I go on auditions. I'm like, okay, so I still got the acting world. You know, I'm still doing stand up. I'm on the road. I'm like, oh, well, that's great. You know, it's like now I'm, st- you know, I feel like, oh, I'm finally starting to make like headway in this podcast game. You know, I'm still trying to figure it out. What makes you think out. you're making headway now different uh, than you felt a few months ago? Because I'm starting to see like, I, I can see how the numbers rise. I can see on how, your podcast. Yeah, yeah. So basically, all this other stuff you're doing, do you still judge it on how your podcast is doing? Like, no, 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 no. That's I, your I, equity. I don't because I know it, there's so many ways to look at the equity. So if I'm at a show and people are walking up to me and they're like, "Hey, I'm here because uh, you know, uh, I saw you on this. I'm here because something other than your podcast. Yeah, yeah. Like, great. That counts. Yeah. yeah. And then, but uh, still, enough people come up to me now. Like a guy came up to me and was like, you know, after the show, he wanted to take a picture and he was like, "Yo, man, I, I'm." I'm I have a lot of anxiety and I have a lot of stress and stuff and your podcast really helps me, you know, and I was like, oh, okay, this is, this is, this, you know, you're making a difference. Uh, even if it's a small difference, it's a, you make a difference. So it's like, there is a point of doing it. So, and the, the things are out there. So my podcast is out there. So there could be people that are finally like, oh, let me find this guy. Mm. Well, I can go binge watch 150 episodes uh, to get to know this guy. Is so, that where you're at now? Yeah. So I just be like, okay, so, so it's out there, you know, so I just feel like, you know what? I did something. It's something I can be proud of. Of, 
And, you know, whether people like it or not, it doesn't matter. It's all part of the, the thing, you know. You know, that, you know, we put ourselves out there so that criticism will come regardless, you know. So it's That's just, why you put yourself out there? Or are no, you saying it happens? I'm saying it just happens. You know, with great success comes great criticism, you know. It's nothing you can do. You can't change that. It's like not everyone's going to like you. So you just go, all right, I put this out there, and how I deal with it is what's important. Make sure when he said that he's wearing a Spider-Man, change that to a Spider-Man shirt just for that with oh, great geez. success. comes. <laughs> uh, where Wish should I go like this? <laughs> <laughs> the chainsaws. <laughs> where should I uh, attempt to do a monthly or more specifically and more immediately one show? And I think decide. you should find some place local. I think you should find some place local, or you should find a venue that is like um, uh, alternative comedy friendly. Uh, you know, there might might be a place like that there where people, you know, because it's like it's okay to to like speak to your people. You know what I mean? It's like there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with like, and you have a, a, a platform to put it out, guys. I'm gonna be, you know, it's like. Those people that do those shows at the Lyric and those, you know, those, those kinds of places. I mean, I like so, that place. But there's something I like about a comedy club that just feels like the. Here's how I feel about a comedy club and why I want to do one there as opposed to a place that is a stage. Be, the same reason why it would be nice when it's nice when you go onto somebody else's podcast. I don't want to worry about telling them how to light and what mics and I just want I get that. They, but but you know you just why you, not do a club? Well, then do a club. But I don't think you think you could do a club. Why? Like I don't think like where you what club are you gonna do this at? Well, the the one that the, there's two places that I've always thought that w that would be is the belly room at the comedy store or the improv lab. Well, those just go. seem like places to do it. Well, if you can get that, then do that. Oh, I didn't even think about that. Get that? Is in like they wouldn't let me? They may not. Who knows? I don't know. I don't know what your relationship is with them. Oh, I don't think I have one. Well, this is what I'm saying, Rick. <laughs> I'm sure they're a fan of the podcast. Yeah, well, I'm sure. I'm sure uh, you know Peter Shore is listening right now. You know what I mean? Oh, well, let me fix my posture. <laughs> I'm just saying. I, I don't know. They might. It could be some, some, some that simple. Hey, can I do a belly room show once a month? Oh, I just thought it would be that simple, but I guess I didn't think about it. I don't know. They may say yes. They may say no. Who knows? Right. I, I'm just saying, but you also want to make it simple for you. It could be something that's close by where you live. Yeah. You know, I don't, I don't know. I'm not saying you couldn't. I'm just saying, you know, whatever. You know, Paige is, you know, Paige at the, you know, just hit up Paige and be like, hey, I'd like to do a show too. You right. know what I mean? Yeah. All right. That's a good spot for Maybe that. Maybe I'll do a you know? show. And then you just tell people, hey, guys, come on out. You know, and you might, because it's like just also something about meeting the people who are who are actual fans of your podcast. Like, that's something special. Hey, so that show that we did, I did three shows since the pandemic started. The uh -huh. last one was right after I got my first shot was with you and- Oh, the Bobby show. Uh, yeah, and at the Brea, yeah, Brea, yeah, Brea yeah, yeah, Improv? Yeah, yeah we had Brea. And it was my first show since the podcast was like, you know, around for a minute. Yeah. And so many people came up to me. So many people were glass and boppers, you know, and, and the parking lot there. Uh, when I'm walking to the, to the uh, sound, uh, sound booth for a second to tell them something, oh, there's, it, was, it was very cool. Yeah. Uh, it was very cool. Well, that's what I'm saying. You got to get out there. And that's what the beauty of this podcast platform and the ones that got gigantic they are they have their fan base and they're out there rocking with them yeah you know and so that's what i'm saying it's like it's time to do that yeah you know it's because the, the you know it's just it's time yeah i gotta fucking pardon my language edit bleep where i said the f word i gotta do i i miss it yeah there you go i feel like i'm a little left behind too does that do you does that make sense oh for sure for sure, for sure, for sure. It's my own th fault. But. Well, I mean, because it's not like riding a bike. You know, you really have to be doing it. It has to, it, you, you, you know, you, you have to be doing it all the time because it's a muscle, you know, because then you remember your cadences, you remember your little nuances, you remember all these little things that make comedy what it is for you. Yeah. And that's not something that you could just like, oh, I'm going to go do it right now. I mean, yeah. you know, it's, you can't do that. You got to be doing it all the time. Yeah. I'm sure there's some muscle memory to it, but you're out of shape, no doubt. Yeah, for sure, man. Yeah. So get your ass out there. Yeah, I think I'm gonna hit hit up a couple of venues today. Yeah, and then I'll talk about it here. I also tell me what you think of this. I I will I will tell everybody because obviously that's how you get people there. I kind of don't want anyone to know for a couple months, no, but I'll just let them know. You can't be like that's your own insecurity. That's your own insecurity about what you're doing. You can't be like that. These people are already well. It's 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 it's. I don't want people. I just don't want people to waste their time. I don't want to ask them again. That's. 
if you feel that way about it, that's that's an indictment about how you feel about your comedy. Don't speak for everyone else. May, well, may, maybe. Well, I don't know. I haven't done it. I know, but you're already a good saying show with, it before you're even doing it. What I'm saying to I'm you is that... I'm admitting to you what... It, yeah. I'm saying it's part open, of it. open up and let people be a part of the process. That's why Bobby called that show New Material Night. That, that's, and he hasn't worked since. That's the signal to all of the people that they're... Yeah. We're working shit out here. So, you know, don't expect... You're not getting a Carnegie Hall show. So I, I'm saying to you, that's how you're presenting this. It's like, you know, it's like Rick's trying to get back out. Uh, Rick's doing it. Whatever you're going to call it, people get it. And they want to come watch. They want to see like, ooh, let me see how you're going to do this. Yeah. And then they're going to be like, oh, man, I can't wait till that one bit gets... Uh, that's how they, they... You know what I mean? So I think you need to stop being insecure about it. Uh, stop having so much judgment on it and just put yourself out there. Enjoy this thing that you've created, which is this great fan base. And, you know, celebrate with them by you, you're, you as you work on yourself on this podcast, you're going to work on the comedy with your fans. I agree as with well. you. And that's a, the, what you're saying to me is also a voice I have in my head. But, I, you know, it's nice to just kind of say it out loud to somebody. Yeah. Uh, all right. Anything else? No. <laughs> so you didn't mention Jen to Jen. Uh, Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's already out every Wednesday. Jen to Jen, it's me and this kid, Matthew Espinoza. And we're just like, we're going to interview a bunch of people. And we're just like showing the bridging the gap between two generations. Check it out. Snap. Oh, is that the theme song? Yeah, pretend like we're talking still. Yeah. Maybe they won't hear us. Well, well. <laughs> Oh, you do that thing. What, what is it like? Like the lights have to dim. They are, you know, and then we have to like lean over to each other, like they used to do on. Uh, they used to do that on. <laughs> I might have to edit out some of the stuff we talked about, like anything that you said. But like, we'll keep. Me Actually, in. there is something I think you should edit out. But anyway, uh, uh, title card. Scoot do blabbery blue. Scoot. Oh!